What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video. And in this video, you will learn about the purpose of a database, um, along with database concepts such as the usage of a database, flat file versus database, records, and storage. All right, usage of a database. A database, also known as a data bank or data store, and sometimes abbreviated as DB, is a large quantity of indexed digital information. It can be searched, referenced, compared, changed, or otherwise manipulated with optimal speed and minimal processing expense. Some of the most popular database management system apps are Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL Server, Microsoft Access, and MySQL. The following uh, discusses four major usage features of databases, such as create, import, input, query, and reports. All right, create. So the first step in using a database is to create its structure. During this process, developers identify the tables needed for the database, how the files will be related to each other, and the data that will be stored in each file. For example, a company might create a, uh, create a branch table and a company section table. The tables can be related to each other by using common fields, such as employee names and the section each employee works in. A table is a data structure that contains rows and columns. A database can be made up of one or more tables. So that is an example of a database table right there. Looks like a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. All right, import and input. So to populate the tables with data, you can use import or input. Import brings data into the database from an existing file, such as a spreadsheet, a common separated values file or a CSV file, or other delimited text files. A delimited text file has a header row that is used to name fields, rows of data that will become records and characters such as commas, semicolons, or tabs between the fields. So that is an example of a CSV file that is on your screen. Some options for importing data include using it to create a new table, appending the records to an existing table, which is suitable if the structure of the data you want to import matches the data already in the table, and creating a link to the data source. The other method is input, in which the user enters each data record. Input can be used to populate an entire database, or it can be used to add additional records after data has been imported. Most database apps enable the user to create a data entry form to make entering data easier. Query. A query is a request for data or information from a database table or combination of tables. This data may be generated as results returned from by structured query language or SQL or as pictorials, graphs, or complex results such as trend analysis from data mining tools. Queries can be performed in a variety of ways. Reports. A database report is the formatted result of database queries and contains useful data for decision making and analysis. A report can be built from a query, so it can provide a printed result of the query. A report does not need to be printed, but it is print ready. A report can group and sort sort data, hide details, and perform operations such as total count and average. A report can also be exported as a data file. Flat file versus database. A database management app can work with a single table or with two or more tables. So what's the difference? So a flat file database is a database stored in a file called a flat file. Records follow a uniform format and there are no structures for indexing or recognizing relationships between records. A flat file database stores all information in a single table. This is suitable if all of the information you need to track is closely related. Flat file managers, also known as NoSQL apps, are also excellent choices for searching and querying non-structured and semi-structured data such as web pages. 
However, if you need to relate different types of information to each other, such as customers, purchases, suppliers, and shippers, using a relational database is a better choice. A relational database is a collection of data items with predefined relationships between them. These items are organized as a set of tables with columns and rows. Tables are used to hold information about the objects to be represented in the database. Each column in a table holds a certain kind of data and field stores the action and the field stores the actual value of an attribute. The rows in the table represent a collection of related values of one object or entity. Each row in the table could be marked with a unique identifier called a primary key and rows among multiple tables can be made related using foreign keys. This data can be accessed in many different ways without reorganizing the database table themselves. Let's talk about multiple concurrent users. Databases that will be used by more than one user at a time need to have some type of locking mechanism to prevent data corruption. Locks can happen at the record level or the row level or at the table level. The type of locking available depends on the table type, which is also known as a storage engine type. A table type that supports saving or completely rolling back a transaction is referred to as transaction safe. Some table types are optimized for speed and size, but are not transaction safe and support only table locking. A table type such as the INNODB, which is now the standard type in uh, MySQL, allows row locking and also supports transactions. Scalability. Database scalability is the ability of a database to handle changing demands by adding or removing resources such as increasing numbers of records, users, and transactions. The ability to handle a greater number of records can vary according to the database engine type used by a database app. A second major consideration is the number of transactions a database can handle. With the rise of online shopping and social networking, scalability also means the ability to keep up with more users and more transactions. Scalability can be improved by increasing the performance of the server running a database by subdividing the database's tables among multiple physical or virtual servers and by choosing the right database engine for the task. Speed. Non-relational databases are generally faster than relational databases when many transactions and lookups are required. That's because a non-relational database stores everything in a single table and does not need to connect uh, tables to each other. However, there are many ways to speed up a relational database, including the following. So you could create a database structure that is optimized for speed. You can limit the number of results you request in a single query. You can avoid looping logic in queries. You can add caching support to your server to lessen the load. You can use data normalization, which is not mixing different uh, types of data, such as alphanumeric and numeric data in a single table column. And you can properly use logical and primary keys. Variety of data. The phrase variety of data is shorthand for the many different types of data that might be stored in a database, such as tables, photos, videos, text, etc. Variety is one of the three factors or the three V's in big data, with the others being velocity and volume. Velocity refers to how quickly data can be accessed, updated, and analyzed. Uh, volume refers to the amount of data stored. To deal with different types of data, it is often necessary to use different types of database and support apps. Another consideration for data that is in a relational database is how to make complex relationships work. Tables can be related to other tables in one of three ways. The first way you have is a one-to-one. -one. That is one record in table A is related to one record in table B. You can have a one-to-many relationship that is one record in table A is related to two is related to two or more records in table B. And you can have a many-to-many -many relationship that would be two or more records in table A are related to two or more records in table B. Let's talk about records. A database record is composed of fields, each of which contain one item of information. A set of records constitutes a file. For example, a personnel file might contain records that have three fields, a name field, an address field, and a phone number field. 
More specifically, a record is a grouping of fields within a table that reference one particular object. The term record is frequently used synonymously, synonymously with row. A record is also known as a tuple. So here is a screenshot of a standard record in a database. Let's talk about storage. To help determine the best, uh, to help determine how to best store and protect data, many organizations have a database administrator, also known as the DBA. A database administrator is a specialized computer systems administrator who maintains a successful database environment by directing or performing all related activities to keep the data secure. There are a variety of ways to store data uh, used in databases. Conventional servers are suitable for relatively small amounts of data that will be accessed over a local area network. However, databases that may be many terabytes in size should be accessed through a more flexible and faster method, such as a storage area network or a SAN. Unlike a shared drive on a server or a network attached storage device, a SAN is accessed as if it were a local drive by a server but uses fast fiber optic connections. Cloud storage, which is a type of cloud computing, is suitable for databases that will be accessed by remote users. Amazon, Microsoft, and other vendors offer dedicated cloud database solutions for data that will be accessed only occasionally or is being retained as an archive. Tape libraries continue to be a suitable solution. Let's talk about the acronym ACID. So an important acronym to help you understand how databases work is ACID. That stands for atom. How do you say this word? Atom <laughs> Adam City or Tom City. I can't pronounce that word. Consistency, isolation, and durability. So the A, uh, Adam Atom is City. Whatever. A database is basically a database that follows the all or nothing rule, i.e. the database considers all transaction operations as one whole unit or atom. Thus, when a database processes a transaction, it is either fully completed or not executed at all. Next, we have consistency ensures that only valid data following all rules and constraints is written in the database. When a transaction results in invalidated data, the database reverts to its previous state, which abides by all customary rules and constraints. Next, we have isolation. Isolation ensures that transactions are securely and independently processed at the same time without interference, but it does not ensure the order of transactions. So, for example, user A withdraws $100 and user B withdraws $250 from user Z's account. Uh, which has a balance of $1,000. Since both A and B draw from Z's account, one of the users is required to wait until the other user transaction is completed, avoiding inconsistent data. If B is required to wait, then B must wait until A's transaction is completed and Z's account balance changes to $900. Now B can withdraw $250 from the $900 balance. And then finally, we have durability. So in the, in the above example, User B may withdraw $100 only after A's transaction is completed and is updated in the database. If the system fails before A's transaction is logged in the database, A cannot withdraw any money and Z's account returns to its previous consistent state. And let's talk about data persistence. So persistent data denotes information that is infrequently accessed and not likely to be modified even after the process that created it ceases or the machine it is running on is powered off. When an object or state is created and needs to be persistent, it is saved in a non-volatile storage location like a hard drive versus a temporary file or volatile random access memory or i.e. RAM. Another example is when a database that has been updated with new transactions is not persistent until it has been stored to disk. The next highest level is found in databases that store the data on disk at all times, but allow the data to be updated in place. Databases that run in memory and create periodic saves to a disk, also known as snapshots, have data persistence only after the data has been committed to disk. All right. So. That is our class. So let's go ahead and get into some of this check on learning. So the first question is, 
A report can be built from a query. Which of the following can be done in a report, but not in a query? Would it be group records? Would it be select records? Would it be list records? Or would it be work with multiple tables? So a report can be built in a query or from a query, I should say. Which of the following can be done in a report, but not in a query? And the correct answer is group records. So reports can group records, queries cannot. All right, next question. Which of the following refers to the ability of a database to handle increasing numbers of records, users, and transactions? Would it be constraints? Would it be data persistence? Would it be scalability? Or would it be import input? So which of the following refers to the ability of the database to handle increasing numbers of records, users, and transactions? Correct answer would be scalability scalability is the correct answer for that and the final question is what are two methods that can be used to populate tables with data would it be record and store would it be import and input would it be report and query or would it be Export and output. So two methods that could be used to populate tables. Correct answer would be import and input. Remember, you can import a spreadsheet of sorts into a database and it'll automatically just start populating the stuff. Or you can go into the database and input information line by line or one object by at a time if you want, whichever makes you happier in life. All right. So. In summary, we have talked about the purpose of a database where we have discussed usage of a database, flat file versus database, records, and storage. So if you want more information on this, please visit my website, technologyg.com, so you can get read right up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass your CompTIA IT Fundamentals Certification Exam. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.